second graders, welcome to Poly Hill. I'm sorry that you're not here with me. Um, I'm hoping that next fall we'll get to see you. But we didn't want you not to have your, your experience in the spring at Poly Hill. So here we are today. Um, and I'm going to give you a tour of the grounds and we're really going to be concentrating on habitats today. Last fall we talked about seeds a lot also, so we'll be talking about flowers to show you where those seeds came from. Now remember, when you come to Poly Hill, we are an arboretum, and an arboretum means that we are a plant museum. You're not here with me right now, but you might end up coming with your family, and if you do, that's fantastic. Just remember, the rules that you have as a school group are the same rules that we ask all of our visitors. One, don't climb on the walls. Don't run through Poly Hill. You'll miss a lot of really great things. Leave your pets at home. It's not necessarily, it's not the best, safest place for them to be. And if you wanna have a picnic here, that's great. But we encourage you to use our picnic grove where there are tables rather than sit on the grass where you might get a tick or maybe encounter some poison ivy. So the safest thing is to use our tables. Because I work here and I've been trained, I know what flowers I can pick and how to pick them. So again, if you come to visit Polly Hill with your family, please don't pick our flowers. You have to wait until you're with a school group to really do any collecting here. So off we go. All right, so our first stop is in Holly Park. If you get a map of Polly Hill, you'll know exactly where we are, or you might remember it from this fall. It looked a lot different. And I wanted to stop here because there are two flowers that I'd really like to show to you. Because I wanna show you flower adaptations. Now this is kind of your traditional flower that we see. And I'm gonna take one of these flowers so we can look at it close up at the end of our walk. It's got the petals and Remember the, the stamen and the seeds come from the center of the, of the flower. So this is kind of our traditional flower, but these are woodland flowers. You're not gonna find these out in the sunlight and you would really have to look for them carefully. I also wanted to stop here because this is one of my favorite flowers and it comes in all kinds of different colors. This is called columbine and the reason I like it is it's got a really cool design to it. And again, when we stop at the end, we'll look at it really close up. But I like the colors of this one also. And when we get close up to it, you'll see there's a ton of pollen. This is a fantastic example of how a flower has adapted for a specific pollinator. And maybe as we walk along, we'll see some pollinators. Right across from the garden we were just at is this beautiful rhododendron plant. I wanted to show it to you because it looks like this is just one flower. In actuality, this is a whole bunch of flowers. It's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven different flowers. So the other reason I wanted to show you this rhododendron is you might not be able to come to Poly Hill and you might not have woodland flowers in your neighborhood. But a lot of people like planting these in their yards as an ornamental because the flowers are so beautiful. Polly Hill, the founder of our arboretum, Polly loved rhododendrons and azaleas, which are closely related. I don't see any around here, so we'll make sure we find you some. But when you go out on your own nature walk through your neighborhood or maybe to another park, you might see one of these. Now, some people can't say the word rhododendron. It's a hard one. So a lot of us just call them roadies. Okie doke, off we go. This is what I was talking about. This is an azalea. Now the azalea's flowers are much smaller, but again, it's the composite. Composite is a word that means many flowers that make it look like one great big bud. I'm actually gonna cut one of these so that we can add it to our collection. So. We just left the woodland habitat. And remember, the word habitat means somewhere where there's water, food, and shelter for animals. So 
the birds that you would find in this area might be very different than the birds you'll see out in our fields. Okay, so we've just walked through Dogwood Alley, and if you listen carefully, I'm always hearing some bees. I hear a lot of birds also. So remember, we're talking about habitats. Habitats are good places that have for animals to live that have food, water, and shelter. One of the cool things about the dogwoods is you find a lot of birds' nests in here. And if you look at the wall over there, there's also shelter and and a living space for the for the chipmunks. Sometimes, oh, there's one that just ran by. Um, so they have a lot of shelter here. They also have food because in the fall, as we saw on our last field trip, there's berries that come off of these trees. And for some birds who like to eat insects, there's insects here. So the third thing that they need is water. Well, around Polly Hill, you'll see bird baths that we put out for the birds. We have a lot of opportunities in our gardens for animals to find water. Okay, so this is a hornbeam tree. This is kind of our, our idea of a joke that we put eyes on it. Really cool tree because it has all of these cavities in it so that when it rains, it catches water. So it's like a natural bird bath. The other thing I like pointing out about the hornbeam is if you look closely, you'll see these holes. Anybody guess what those holes are from? You're right, woodpeckers. So woodpeckers come and they and they peck into the wood and they can find insects there. Sometimes also the woodpeckers will up much higher in dead trees. They'll actually carve out uh, areas where they can live in the tree. So they're getting food, they're getting shelter, and if it's a tree like this, they'd have water all in one area. They wouldn't have to move a whole lot. We're gonna go to Polly's playpen now. Come on. I couldn't go on to Polly Hill's playpen until we stopped to see this tree. Look how big the leaves are. I love this tree because look, it's like the leaves are like bigger than my arm. And in the fall, when the leaves are on the ground, we can collect them and some people use make hats out of them, but we never pick the leaves off of them this time of year because it's important for this magnolia to be able to get its food from the sunlight, and it does that through the leaves. This magnolia is called a magnolia macrophylla, and that's the science name for it. And in science, macro means big, right? And phylla means leaf, so big leafed magnolia, perfect name for it. Polly Hill named this the Julian Hill because she named it after her husband, and she actually planted this tree from a seed. Now this is an amazing thing. If you look at this, oh, if you look at this set of leaves right here, this pod will become a flower a little later in summer, probably in the next couple months. And so it's just getting ready to flower. Not all trees and plants flower at the same time because if they did, there would be too much competition for pollinators. So they try and space themselves out so that they can get the best pollination. Because remember, pollination means that when they get pollinated, their flowers, their fruits will grow into seeds and then the seeds can be dispersed to grow more trees. Look at this, isn't this gorgeous? Look at these, they're three different plants with three different colored flowers. It's amazing. Now, sometimes people don't know what the plant names are, and they're right here. We have tags for every single one of our plants. So if you look carefully at the base of the plant, you'll find a tag, and this is called a sweet shrub. So that will tell you the name of the plant. Just amazing. This is a clematis, climbing plant, it's like a vine. And then you've got that azalea back there. Beautiful planting. Oh, hi Oliver. Hey, Ol Oliver is one of our staff members who works here and takes care of the plants. He's awesome, he's one of our plant heroes. 
Good to see you. Wow. Look at that big tree. That's awesome. I don't have any trees that big in my yard. Okay, so here we are at Polly's Playpen, and this garden is completely surrounded with deer fencing so that no rodents, no deer can get in and hurt the plants because they're all very, very special plants that are in this playpen. So we make sure that when we go in, we, we always shut the gate behind us, even if we think we're gonna come out the same way. So here we are in Polly's playpen, and Polly, what Polly loved doing, what she liked playing with, was plants. And Polly is known for hybridizing a bunch of azaleas. They're called the North Tisbury Azalea. If you go, ever go to a garden store and see North Tisbury Azalea, you can tell the people there that Polly Hill hybridized that azalea. Now Polly would name different types of North Tisbury azaleas, depending on the colors of their, of their uh, flowers. And also, if you look at this one, it's a, this is a, um, it's actually a, a rhododendron out of the rhododendron family, but look how little the leaves are. And if you look really close, you'll see it's just about to bloom. So today is June 3rd. If you come next week to the, or if you come later in June, this probably will be all red flowers. It's spectacular. And I'm not going to collect this flower right now because there's only one blooming. And we do have people who are coming and visiting the Arboretum, and I want them to be able to enjoy the flowers also. Look at this. I mean, this is just amazing. Now, these are one of the plants that we don't allow anybody to cut, staff members, this is a peony, and you may see peonies. Maybe some of your parents have peonies, but none of your parents have the Alexander Wolcott peony. This is a very, very special peony. You can look and you can see that there are many, many different stamens, and there are three different pistils. So if you think about that, there's going to be lots of seeds, but lots of opportunities for pollinators to gather that pollen. And yeah, they're loaded with pollen. Beautiful. Check out this bumblebee. He is really collecting pollen as fast as he can. There's a lot of them right here. Remember, when you are um, going on a nature adventure, you don't want to get stung by bees. So just look at them, watch them, and you'll see, you'll notice that they go from flower to flower to flower. And you might even get to see the pollen sacs that are on their back legs. They look like they're, they're, they're covered in pollen. They get, bumblebees are really great pollinators because they get pollen all over their bodies. And then they have these back legs that have a real sticky area so that pollen can stick on them. And then they'll carry it and take it to another plant and pollinate that plant. remember what this tree is? This is a favorite of a lot of kids. It's the monkey puzzle tree. And remember, it's so sharp, just touching it, ouch. So this is a protection against animals and against animals that might want to eat it. There's no way any animal's going to eat this. Okay, so here we are at a totally different type of habitat. This is a grasslands habitat. And so you're not going to see uh, a lot of trees in here and you're going to see different animals like I don't know whether you can see them but there are lots of butterflies in here right now little tiny moths and butterflies that will live in these grasses grasshoppers and they'll get food shelter and water in this area there are a lot of fields on Martha's Vineyard and every place is important an important habitat for plants for animals so we should try to preserve our, our open spaces. Polly Hill's favorite thing was conservation. She believed in conservation and conserving different natural areas. And Polly Hill Arboretum has worked to be a conservation 
organization. And part of our conservation volunteers are you. Because the more you learn about nature, the more you'll be able to protect nature. And that's what we want you to do. Okay, so here we are in our sassafras stand. And sassafras are pretty amazing trees um, for a bunch of different reasons. But our first reason I'm gonna show you is because of the leaves. Sassafras is one of the only trees that has three different leaves. It has the mitten leaf, it has the trident, meaning that it's got three lobes, the trident leaf, and then it has just a regular lobed round leaf. Most trees don't, they only have one type of leaf and they're easy, but not the sassafras. Now the sassafras also is really important to the history of Martha's Vineyard. And you may remember that in 1642, Bartholomew Gosnell discovered Martha's Vineyard. And you know what he was here looking for? Sassafras trees. Because the leaves of sassafras trees were used as medicine way back then in England. And they were worth a lot of money. So he wanted to harvest sassafras trees, bring them back to England, and make his fortune. Now sassafras is um, not used that way anymore, um, but some people still do make sassafras tea, including the Wampanoag tribe. Well, here we are at the end of our tour, and you know that when you come to Polly Hill at the end, we usually meet in the far barn and we go over all the things that we discovered. So here are some of the flowers that we looked at today, and some that I clipped without you knowing them. But as you can see, flowers come in all different sizes and varieties and shapes and colors. Some are big, some are little, some are droopy, some are open. And all of this showiness comes from the sheer fact that they want to get pollinators. Whether it's a bee, the bees love pollinating rhododendrons and the azaleas. Or maybe it's a fly, flies like white flowers or it could be a butterfly or a moth. And going back to my favorite columbine, it's usually butterflies or moths that will pollinate this. But pollinators aren't only insects. We also have birds that are pollinators, and we have the wind that pollinates. And sometimes if it's a heavy rain, it, that will be pollinating also. The, the, they will, the rain will carry the pollen to another area. Right now, there is a lot of pollen in the air. My truck is usually black, but now it's yellow with pine pollen. So even if they aren't flowers, like pine trees, pine cones throw off pollen. So keep your eyes out for pollen and pollinators and flowers. Make sure to get outdoors at least once a day and enjoy this springtime that we have. And hopefully, Next fall, we'll see you at Polly Hill. But if not, you'll definitely get more information from me throughout the, the school year. So we miss you very much at Polly Hill Arboretum. We invite you to come. And remember, now you're the expert. So you tell your parents the rules and point out some of the flowers that you love. Bye for now.